You ready for the weekend? Uh-huh. How do I am? It's been a long week. It certainly has. Um, I know I, I spoke with you just on the phone. Right. And I wanted to sit down and talk with you because um, I know you work with Jennifer. I've known Jen for a very long time. Right. Yeah. That's How long have you known Jen? About 21, 22 years. Okay. That's a long time. Yeah. Well, when I first met her, she was 19, so I've watched her oh, wow. grow up, okay. you know. So. Right. And so your position at the EDA is the marketing? Director of marketing. Director of marketing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And when you were, um, when you were working there, um, you were missing the day that... Um, she called us with the... I was working from home that day. Right, right. You I have two days a week that Jennifer uh, has given me to work from home. Well, that's nice. Yeah. Uh, years that they couldn't afford to give me a raise, they uh, offered me that instead. Okay, to yeah. work from home instead? Right. Okay, and you accepted that? So. Yeah. Oh, At first I didn't like it. I felt like, wait a minute, you know. <laughs> but then I've grown to really appreciate it. Yeah. Okay. Um, did she share with you uh, exactly, you know, the everything that happened there as far as what? Well, we I'll tell you what happened. Uh, Missy called me from the office mm -hmm. and said that I might be hearing from you, and she said, "Let me tell you what's happened here." Okay. Now, background information: Jennifer had been stalked by this blogger. Yeah, yeah, Matthew, Matthew Burdick. So um, we knew that had been going on for quite some time. But this uh, startled me quite a bit. So Missy said, be prepared. Uh, Detective Waller's probably going to call you. Mm -hmm. And um, I think you called right after that. I did. And then I packed up and came down. And Missy had taken a photograph of the room, the chair and everything um, and showed it to me. Okay, so Missy has photographs? She has one that she took, yeah. It was just so disturbing. I think it none is. of us could really believe. Sure. It was definitely personal, very personal. It was attack. very right. now, violent, I thought. Absolutely. Now, were you aware of anyone who, you know, have this, would be this personal? towards Jennifer because well, uh, there's two other people working in the office and they directly targeted her. Jennifer's been in the press a lot because she has a very high profile job. Sure. Um, I think there have been like little jabs at her over the years uh, in the press mm -hmm. mostly. Then this Matthew Burdick thing and the IT Federal uh, which is out on the Abtex site. Yes. Um, and then it started to get nasty and personal, and this was, and and then I I think that she's had some issues at her home as well. Okay. Um. It was very personal, but this was very disturbing. What, what's going on at her home? Well, I think she's had people. Um. You know, I. Th think she's had the sheriff come out and watch her home because she was afraid that they would take it to the next level. Because they, whoever this Matthew Burdick and his group were, mm -hmm. threatened her mother, I think, at one point. Wow. So was that a verbal threat over the phone? You know, I can't remember if it was posted on Facebook. He posted a lot of stuff right. and then would take it off real quick right. so he couldn't be caught at anything. But there have been a lot of, a uh, number of real personal. Um, Do you know the most recent personal thing? I mean, the Matthew Burdick thing was happening more, you know, in January, February, right. earlier in the year, but anything recent that you know of? Other than what happened at our office, right. no. There's, and the nasty articles that are written uh, in the Royal Examiner, particularly. Right. 
but you guys work in the same office. You guys don't talk over like the water cooler or like we talk all the time. Like right. I know what his kids and his wife are doing and you know, vice versa. You know, we just all kind of share things. Do you all not share that much stuff together? Well, yeah. Yeah, okay. we do. What exactly are you looking for? Well, I mean, she's reported quite a bit of stuff that's happened at her house and it seems like you don't know about it. Well, I don't feel particularly free to talk about it, I think. But that's what we're investigating is, it's all, it's all connected. Connected is that we have a very short window that things are happening at her house as well as your office and not just one time. And that's what we need to get to the bottom of and any information that you can push us into the right direction or something that we hadn't thought of or anything like that, that's what we need is, um, I, I, and I'm gonna be honest with you here. <laughs> is we have interviewed quite a few people and I can't say that the veracity has been very high in some of the people that we have been interviewing. And you being a third party and not having anything to do with this, you could shed a lot of light on the comings and goings and personalities and what has really been going on um, so that we can get to the bottom of this because it's not only a direct threat on Jennifer, but it's a violation also of you and your office space well, in that I know. whole I know. area. And um, if there's items that have been stolen out of there. Um, so it, it's very, it, it, it's a pretty big issue. It's very, you know, um, serious to us right. for all of you that are involved. I know that Jennifer has had a lot of incidents or issues at her house. And I don't know, I can't remember all the specifics um, because I'm old. Um, <laughs> in fact, I'm going to be 67 next Friday. Hey! So, um, Happy birthday. Happy free birthday. Um, I know that I think, I think she heard people prowling around mm -hmm. a couple of weeks ago. Did um, you mention that? I think, um, I, I think someone left a nasty note on her windshield. Um, those kinds of things, but I don't, I can't keep all that. I just know there's been a lot of, you know, um, sort of invasion out at her property. I don't know that anyone's actually gotten in, but. Right. So with you working with her for 20 years, I mean, who could be so angry and pissed off? To I have no idea. To do that. This has come as such a horrifying shock. It keeps getting more and more invasive and and violent and it, it's really disturbing. So with this last time with you know the knife you know I, actually there's been two instances with a knife isn't there? Yes one she came in and it was so odd that all three of us just went well that's just weird you know it never it never occurred to us that somebody had actually planted it there, you know. Right. So yeah, it was in her chair and she thought it was odd and Missy and I were like, wow. And then the next week was the... Okay. But there's, but yet there's no forced entry. So how would someone gain entry? I have into no idea. Because from what I understand is there's three people with a key to the place. Yeah. I was trying to think if any of our board members have keys. Um, I don't know. I don't know how this is. That, that's the most disturbing part of it. It all. is because you know, and when we look at it from our standpoint, that means that we have a very short suspect list of that who could be involved. Is that we have three people with a key, and that's how entry was made. Could, could someone that she works with have a grudge? Well, I don't agree, you know, maybe from a forensic standpoint, right. but I don't agree with that assessment okay. at all. Okay. Because the three of us and our, our fourth part-time counterpart get along extremely well. Right. There is no uh, tension in the office. I mean, we laugh a lot. Um, right. And those locks, the thing that has always disturbed me is when I, I'm usually the first one in, in the morning and the uh, deadbolt lock is never engaged. And I think, you know, some of these doorknob locks are very easy to, 
to pick. One time I locked myself out of my townhouse and just took a credit card right. and wiggled it and was able to get in. Yeah, you'd be surprised. It is pretty easy to. So yeah. um, I don't think throwing the focus on the staff is okay. accurate. But Would Jennifer have done this to herself? Oh my God, no. Yeah. Oh no. Mm -mm. Okay. And why do you say that? Well, um, because I've known her for a very, very long time. Uh, she works very, very hard. She's very proud of the work she does. That's all I got from her. Um, she's a very honest... She, is, she takes care of a lot of people. She is one of the most generous human beings I have ever known in my life. And um, she's making sure that her nieces go to college. I mean, she's really like an angel to her family. She just doesn't have a, this is pretty um, emotionally ill, <laughs> whoever did this. And that is not her. And I, and I agree with you. I think there's um, tons of ways to get, get into a building. And I also think that there is a ton of ways to make copies of keys. And there any any number of people I have I heard there's of a keys. thing now where you can actually take like a, I don't know if it's um, soft plastic or yeah, some kind of clay, right. you know, and make an image. Right. Um, anyway, no. I, I wouldn't at all believe that she would do something like this. She's under a lot of stress. So, oh, I can imagine. I can imagine. I don't, this is not her way of relieving stress, <laughs> so, you know. I, I know where your office is. Your office is where, in the, it's kind of in the back. Right. But you were the only one who's in the office other than Jennifer yesterday, because Missy's gone. Right. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. Um, I know people come in and out. Are you aware of people that when they come in and out, do you... Well, we have a little button that I can turn on, but it is so loud it freaks everybody out. So I listen very carefully to hear people coming and going. And usually what happens is that big heavy door, Right. when they shut that door, then I'm, then I'm alerted that somebody's so out there. Get up. And, right. Okay. And um, greet them, yeah. Sure. So um, what time did you work till yesterday? 4.30. Okay. Um, Yesterday afternoon, um, Jennifer, I'm sure she told you, she came down and spoke with us yesterday. Mm -hmm. Was that right? Uh, she didn't tell me that she had sp Oh, yes, she did. She said she was here for a couple of hours, as I recall. Okay. Yeah. When she came back, do you remember who she spoke with at the office? Who she spoke with at who, the Who came to, you know, did anybody come to her office to talk to her oh. yesterday afternoon? I mean, she left here probably about 2.30. Yeah. So that kind of narrows it down for an hour and a half because there's only an hour and a half left until 4, 4.30, a couple hours. I know, but short-term memory goes when you're 50. So <laughs> let me see if I can recall. You mean who she spoke with on the phone? No, who spoke, who came to the office physically. They came to her office, which you would have heard the door someone. I'm not sure anyone did, did they? Um, I can't yeah. recall. It could have been like a board member, it could have been like Someone Norma from... Jean or Roger, it could have been another detective. I, I don't remember. I don't remember. I know that Jim Easton, one of our board members, came in yesterday, but I don't remember what time he came in. Um, who else came in? So did you know when, when she came back? Uh, obviously because you were the only one at the office while she was here. Is that correct? Right. Okay, so when she came back, you knew she was back. Is that correct? Because was she the only one there at the office other than you? Yeah. Okay, so you were there at the office. Then you I was the there door all open. day yesterday. Right, so, all you, day. so you hear her come in. You know, she, yesterday, was it yesterday or was it the day before? Yesterday. Yesterday. Yesterday she was in and out at meetings. She had to go meet, you know, out on a job site. So right. I think she was out most of the afternoon. I was expecting her back, and at 4.30 I locked up and went home. I don't think she was in the office. She wasn't when I 
left yesterday. Right. But she did come back, though, after she was here. Yeah, and then she was out, and then she was back in, and then she you was out. You might have got a phone call about some kind of land purchase. Someone wanted to purchase land or had land for sale. Did you tell her anything like that yesterday? Yes, I did. Um, and you... Oh, I think Roger was in there. Roger being Keeney. Oh, okay. Okay. Came to talk to her. And someone had called right before he arrived, and I was on my way to her office. Okay, I remember now. And I said, um, you just got a call about someone interested in some land, and he left his information on her voicemail. So I think it was Roger being Keeney. Okay. So he was there in the office with her? He came after she had gotten back from one of her many meetings. Okay, and sat down and talked with and her. And talked with her, yeah. Do you remember about, do you know about how long that was? Or? I think he was there for about an hour, actually. Do you know what they spoke about or anything like that? Um, I don't, other than, um, I think he told her that Tom Sayer had been spending a lot of time with Norma Jean Shaw. And they had a long discussion about that. Yeah. And this is from, and this is from, uh... Roger, who is a reporter for the Royal Examiner. No, no, I, I know who Roger, uh, uh, I know, uh, th but you're getting your information from Jennifer, yeah. is that correct? Mm -hmm. Jennifer said that Tom Sayer had been spent a lot of time with Norma Jean. Jennifer said Roger told her right. that he wanted her to be aware that Tom Sayer had been spending a lot of time in their office with Norma Jean. And she told you that after the meeting with Roger? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because she was pretty stunned by that information. Yeah, Tom talks to everybody. Yeah. He seems to be everywhere. Yeah. Well, he's, he's a, I mean, he's a council or supervisor, board, board of supervisors, supervisor. and he used to be a council member, so he knows a lot of people, has a lot of backing. Yeah. Okay. And how, why was that, when she, he was talking, him talking to Norma Jean, why is that startling? Well, it, uh, just that he seems to be uh, more and more closely affiliated with this, the issue that seems to be at hand is the workforce housing project that right. Jennifer's been working Recently, on. Yeah. And I think they were at a board of supervisors meeting in closed session. And when they went to begin discussion of workforce housing, Archie Fox uh, left because it was a conflict of interest for him because he owns rental properties. And Tom Sayer got up and left with him too and no one can quite figure out. Then he called um, Doug Stanley later and wanted Doug to tell him everything that had happened. And Doug said, you should, you should not have left the yeah. closed session. So it's just, you know, little weird Very things peculiar. like that are happening. And then when Roger said that Tom Sayer is spending a lot of time in the office with Norma Jean, that just kind of was like, you start to put these things together and it's odd behavior. Now did, uh, this morning, did you talk to Jennifer this morning? I did. Did she tell you anything that happened at her place last night? Or the day before or something that she would have been upset about? She did. Okay. Okay, when did she tell you? First thing this morning, probably around nine o'clock. Okay. And what'd she say? That there had been some disturbance around her house last night and um, her dog was going kind of crazy. She was downstairs. Um, she called 911. Um, This has just been really disturbing.
It is. They told her to stay in the basement. She heard, she was there alone with her dog. She heard a loud thump. She first, she heard noise that she thought someone was trying to get in her front door and then she heard a loud thump. And when the um, deputies got there, um, her front screen door had been pretty much demolished. And she had a, an oval glass in her front door and someone had thrown a landscaping paver through it and um, crashed the, the glass. So the deputies were all there with her. And, they and took, was anything stolen, anything like that? No. Apparently there was a note of some sort involved. Um, that had some kind of instructions on it, and it had a couple of numbers and names mm -hmm. on it. Okay. Did she tell you who those numbers belong to? She doesn't have the note. Mm -hmm. So, although she thinks she knows what one of the numbers is, she can't, she can't verify it. Right. Mm -hmm. Who does she think the number was? Tom Sayer. Okay. Have you ever met with Tom Sayer? Do you know Tom Sayer? I mean, here's the thing about Tom Sayer. Um, you know, is he a little goofy? You know, these type of things. I think so a little bit. You know, that's just me. But um, do I think he's devious or would be behind something like this? I honestly don't. Well, didn't he call the police on Roger being Keeney one time because Roger was writing articles that were not complimentary to Tom Sayer? Don't, I don't know what his reasoning was. And Roger likes to hang out at the bars a lot. Yeah, that, that's true. So, I mean, not devious? C calling, yeah, calling, the, well, calling the police on someone who's doing illegal behavior is not something that's unusual. Do we agree? If yeah. if but if, I just if I don't like if, 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 if I don't like you, uh, here's the thing if I don't like some if I have a disagreement with someone I don't like him personally um, which we don't like everybody that's human nature we don't all get along with everyone and I know that they're doing something that's illegal every day um, would that be something that I would do to to was that, is that something I mean. You're See, you're my, my feeling is so, someone who's driving and talking. Let go and let God. That's you know, it's like karma will get him. I, I think his motive was was off. However, sure, I his, think his motive is off. But you also have which you know, makes me a little suspect right? of him. But, but and he is goofy. But now there's the, there's another sort of uh, layer to it that makes me just wonder what. You but know. I mean, if you knew someone, if you knew someone who was, if I saw someone driving down the road, swerving and carrying on, I would call nine one one immediately. But if you knew this was a regular behavior of someone, I, that's not me. That's not okay. what I would do. Okay, but it would be concerning, though. I mean, wouldn't you find that concerning if you have young children who are going to be out driving in the evening? I mean, yeah, he does have young children. He has young daughters who go to Christendom College who that hang around. out at Melting Pot. No, who drive around town. Yeah. You do have to drive to get from Melton Pot to other but places. But I think the whole thing is it. Sure, I'm just saying no. No, it's it's obvious. But a way to get back was. and Karma will get It was it, it was vengeful. vengeful. Right, that's absolutely. what I think. Oh, I agree. I don't yeah. think his I his agree. motives were to protect. Sure. You know pedestrians right. on right. Royal Avenue. Correct. But and that's what makes you put all these little things together, and it's just. And this isn't someone that, that, I mean, we've racked our brain trying to figure out who has such an axe to grind with Jennifer that they would do these very, very disturbing things. Are you and positive his that she told you that this morning, or did she tell you that yesterday afternoon? Tell me. About the incident stone being thrown through her door. This morning? This morning. She didn't say anything about it yesterday. Uh-uh. Okay. Did you have any meetings this morning with anybody? 
I don't know because when she came in, she was very upset, and that's what we talked about. Yeah. yeah. And and you were there for most of the morning. Ms. Today. I, yes. Yeah, I've been there since eight fifteen. Okay, and nobody has come in as far as meeting personally with her in her office today. Um, Jim Easton came in. Um. um did anyone else come in? No, she. She had a meeting with one of our board members out of the office, and then she came back. No, there hasn't been anyone in the office. So Jim Easton is the only yeah. one who came in today. And who was the board member she met with? Um, our vice chairman, um, Greg Drescher. Oh, great. I think he had to sign checks or something. Superintendent of schools? Yeah. A big, a and our, our chairwoman is very, very ill and close to death. Is that Miss Wines? Yeah. Oh. And so Greg, I think, is preparing. And Jim, as you know, is very I, ill too. I love Jim. So, yeah. That just breaks my heart. This is a tough year, I gotta tell you. Mm -hmm. This is a tough year, and I'm hoping to retire. I did hear you were in gonna October. retire. October. I know I've been threatening it for two years now. Right. Um, and. So, you know, this is a tough year for Jen because she and I are very, very close. But I'm going to work part time and kind of. Good for you. Yeah. Yeah. So, was there ever um, a time where you were considered to be uh, for to be the director of the EDA? Oh, no. No? No. Okay. I mean, when, let's see, Stephen Hevner, I went to work at the EDA in 1995. And Stephen Hefner left in 2003, I believe. Mm -hmm. And Jennifer and I had presented uh, an option to our board that we co-direct, because we'd had our hands in all parts of the EDA, and it just seemed, and they said no, and so I went on, and you know, then they hired Paul Carroll, and he was a sort of difficult personality. Right. And he and I did not. Actually, what happened was I lost both my dad and my mom, and then I was the executor of their estate, so I needed time to go travel, get my family together, and begin that process, and he said no. And I, in the midst of grief, kind of That's had a very rough time with it. So I... Um, was that in 2003? That was in 2005. Okay. So he wasn't in that position for very long. No, he wasn't. And um, so I left. I left the ADA. Went off for a few years, two or three years, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and then Jennifer applied for the job and got it. And about, and I think about a year later, she brought me on. For, Full time. So. so you have no animosity towards Jennifer whatsoever. I love her I like that. a sister. Okay. Yeah. And what about Missy? We all get along so well together. Um, Missy is one of the sweetest human beings I've ever known. Um, but this is what I would say is um, I always say that I'm, you know, nothing can shock me because some of the things that good people, Good people do bad things, bad people do good things. You know, it goes both ways type of things. And and it just never fails that I get shocked by someone's actions. Or, you know, they keep everything inside, like maybe political reasons where, you know, political hotbeds are going on all over the place, nationally and locally, um, that someone could hold, you know, maybe hold back a little bit on, on their judgments of people and stuff. Um, I think, here's what I think about Missy, she's got her hands full. She has a, dis, a semi-disabled husband. She's got young grandchildren. Um, she leaves work in the evening and she's tired. Um, I have never ever seen any, and she loves Jennifer, loves Jennifer. So I've never seen any kind of animosity in Missy. I've, we all feel very lucky that we 
like each other and right. get aw along so well. Right. That's good. Um, yeah, that there's no way any one of us would have done. And I, I've heard that too. So don't don't think that we're, you know, we have to ask these questions. We have to try because I don't I don't know you. This is the first time I've met you, and um, yeah, it, that you you all are pretty close and everything. We are. Yes. We're like a little family in there. So don't think that someone has said something like you know like you know so. Well, it's kind of scary sitting here. It is. You know? and, um, and we are getting a little bit personal, but it, it is, it's about relationships and, um, and what is going on there. Who had access and opportunity and, um, and why now? Because this is the first time that Jennifer's made headlines. You know, the EDA is always at the forefront of something going on. I know. That the public doesn't quite understand or the two governments and you have these people that, you know, want to know everything and feel they have a right and are entitled to things. And um, so, why now? Well, I think there's been, there's a group of people that don't like Jennifer. Um, one is an ex-town manager. Mike Graham. Mike Graham. One is an ex-councilman, Shea Parker. One is a uh, re a, a uh, commercial and residential property owner, Stan Brooks. Mm -hmm. Stan is like he moves around town and just kind of keeps everything stirred up. Right. He is um, a busy body. Yeah, he is. Um, I think Stan is annoyed. Well, he's always sort of been all over the EDA anyway because I don't think he wants a lot of um, construction and growth. He wants a very specified certain kind of growth. Um, I think he's had an issue with the EDA for a long time. But now that we're uh, kick-starting the workforce housing stuff, that steps on quite a few people's toes. So I'm not surprised that there are people that are mad. Um, but then you throw in, um, I'm not real sure about Norma Jean, um, what her, I, I don't know why she's made this such a personal, it's one thing to be a journalist and report the stories right. as they factually roll out. It's something else to throw a headline up that says incompetent or manipulative. She said that about Jennifer? She put a headline on the Royal Examiner website that said that. But yet then Jennifer calls Norma Jean in for interviews and stuff and tells her different things? Uh, Jennifer calls Norma Jean? I don't or think so. Or stops it or, you know, still oh, talks yeah. to her and gives her statements and... Well, Jennifer has been trying to maintain a professional... Right and not let what a few, and the Royal Examiner is kind of considered a, I mean, a lot of people don't even know it exists, right. um, frankly. Kind of a second-rate um, news source. So Jennifer's just trying to go, you know what, I gotta let this stuff go. Just do my job, you know. And Norma Jane calls her quite frequently. So, um, but I don't understand why she has kind of, it's like she's looking for some dirt on the EDA that we're doing something right. illegal and... I mean, I kind of, I kind of got that just too, yeah. a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Looking to make a name. I've known Roger for 22 years. He's always been that way. Right. He's always looking for the conspiracy and everything, you know. But Norma Jean, I don't know where this all came from. So, um, so you know, you have a group of people that actually are have an axe to grind that don't like Jennifer, or they're using Jennifer to bash the EDA, whatever. So. Does um, Jennifer have pictures of the knife in the picture and the slanderous? The word? things that Missy had. The things that Missy had on her phone? Yeah, pictures I of that. think she does 
have copies of that. Yeah. But she hasn't showed you those. Um, Miss, I saw Missy's Not photographs. Jennifer. Not Jennifer's. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But Jennifer, do you think Jennifer does have those on her I phone? think she does. Yeah. What makes you think that? Has she shown anybody else those pictures? I think she may have shown Roger Bianchini. Okay. When do you think she did that? Um, I don't know if it was the last. I don't know. He's been in a couple of times. It could have been in the last week. I don't know if it was the other day when he came in or a few days ago when he came in. Yesterday when he came in. Right. Um, that he, he was apologizing to her. You, you know I don't mean this personally, you know, I'm just reporting the news. And she said, well, let me show you what personal is. And she put the picture up and mm -hmm. showed him. Right. And he was visibly mortified. Were you there when that took place? No, she told me about it. Okay. And do you think, did she show Norma Jean as well? I don't know. Oh, she told me, yes, that she had shown Nor Norma Jean, and Norma Jean just went, oh, yeah. She said Roger was like, <gasps> like all of us were when we saw it. Norma Jean just went, Oh. Yeah, Nor Norma Jean is another funny lady, kind of like She's a personality. A little bit. Yeah, pers you know. Well, you know, um, every person that's ever seen that picture has responded, you know, in horror and revulsion, and sh she just kind of shrugged it off. Uh, I think that's weird, but... Right. But, but, um... Jennifer did show her, and she just didn't have any... No reaction no, whatsoever. Not a whole lot of emotion was mm -hmm. shown when she showed no. Norma Jean those pictures. No surprise, either. Really? There was no surprise, according to Jen. No surprise. Mm -hmm. She just kind of... She just went, oh. And wow. how long ago was that after the event? Was it, like, right after? Um, when was it? Gosh, when did that even happen? I can't even remember. That was remember. the 18th of May is when it happened. Um, and then... No, it's been more recent. Norma Jean came in to interview Jennifer about some story. Uh, I can't remember. It's been within the last week, I believe, Norma Jean came in mm -hmm. to talk to Jennifer or interview her for a story or shore up some details about, you know, the uh, workforce housing stuff. I can't remember that. Right. But um, Jennifer did show her the picture, and she said she had no reaction at all. And I don't even remember how she phrased it with Norma Jean. I don't know if she said, you know, this is the result of, you know, everybody bashing me in public. I mean, this is what happens when, um, and she said Norma Jean had no reaction. Right. That's interesting. Um, do you know of anything that's been stolen from the EDA? You know, right after the day, a few days after, we were all in such um, shock and, and a little bit of fear, you know. In this day and age, you never know if someone's going to blow through the door with an automatic weapon. And um, and I think we were all just kind of walking around in a daze. And Jennifer, one, she said one night she woke up in the middle of the night and thought, you know, I never checked the, the top of my credenza to see if anything was missing from there. And she keeps a lot of the confidential contracts. And she went in and that next morning and looked, and sure enough, the contract between Kurt Tran um, and I, I guess it's the EDA, um, to build the um, 
safety building out there was missing. The new academy? The academy. Do you know when, when she had that dream and went in the morning? Like, was well, it the next you know, day? Or was we it were talking about it yesterday, and I think it was about two weeks ago that she realized it was gone. And so we never said a word. Well, I don't know who she told, but I, you know, of course, nobody said anything. And um, suddenly, the other day, Norma Jean, that might have been why Norma Jean came to the office. Um, no, because she's been emailing Jennifer. She emailed and said, my sources tell me that Kurt Tran is the financier for the, you know, why all the secrecy. Was that the only thing that was taken, was just the academy There, I filed? think there was something else, and I can't remember what it was, but that's the one that really stuck with me because they've sort of been after Kurt trying to get to the bottom of his right. story. Um, I think there was some other, something else, but I swear I can't remember what it was. Another contract or another legal document of some sort. Okay. But Do you, you think Norma Jean is capable of breaking in and taking that folder? I would That information? think that of her? No, I would not. I feel like they've hired somebody to do this dirty work, and I don't even know who they are. Right, that's what I was going to ask you. So. <laughs> but, you know, there is a group of people that really have made it very clear, um, but I can't imagine her actually breaking in and doing this stuff. Now, is, um, do you know if Jennifer is doing personal transactions and keeping items at the office? Like personal land transactions, like if she's buying a property or she, you know. Has, I have no idea if she keeps know. personal stuff. I don't, I don't go in her office very often. Right. I don't do file, you know, I don't have anything to do with her side right. of the she, but she did tell you that after that she had a dream or she, she thought, you know, wanted to check the files. She did check it and there was... Um, and that's when she realized that yes, there were things missing, and that was after the initial you, investigation. What all did she tell you was missing well, besides the academy file? There was one other document, and I can't remember what it was. Okay. And what did she say was missing from the academy? Um, I believe it was the master agreement, the contract. Okay. I believe that's what she told me. Um, did she know that it was missing before, or after that board meeting, when she told the board? When she told the board. Did she tell the board that she had, the incident? About, about the incident that happened to her where um, she, with the knife and everything, um, she had a board meeting with the board of directors where she was going to tell them. Well, um, I have to look at my calendar because um, the board meeting was what, on the 24th? I think the break-in was on the 18th. Right. I think it was two weeks after the break-in. So the break-in was on the 18th. I think the board member meeting was on the 26th. 26. But it was about two weeks. Okay. Oh, you can. You, yeah. I think it was. And then you can just push up if you want to June. Okay, where are we? The 16th. It was probably around... Um, It was probably around the first week or so of June, or maybe the last of May, when she realized. So that would have been after the board meeting. It was after the board meeting, and it was about two weeks before Norma Jean sent the. That's that's what strikes my mind. It was two weeks later. And I after, think Norma Jean came in on the fifth. Okay. June the fifth. Yep, yeah, June fifth. So. So it was about what well, she came in where? To the EDA to um, interview Jennifer. No, that was thing. just the other day, I thought. I don't know. I thought it was about two weeks at, before the break, after the break in, 
that we realized there were documents right. missing. Okay. Was Jennifer upset about that? Oh, yes. Because she's been working with Kurt for years, and his specification, which people have every right when they're putting that kind of investment, to say, I don't okay. want my name out there, I don't want the company's name out there, when we sign the vi uh, final documents and, and we break ground, then you can tell people. But I don't want people harassing me and coming to, you know. Yep. He wanted to protect his privacy. I, I completely understand that. And everybody seems to think that he's hiding something, and that's ludicrous. Um, at least as far as I know, it's ludicrous. Um, so... It's just very annoying. <laughs> We're trying to do really good things for the community. Yeah, I agree. You know. But you have a few busybodies that just well, feel that someone's getting something for nothing or someone's getting rich off of someone and just... Uh, it's one thing if they're hanging out at the gazebo and smoking cigars and bashing whoever. It's another thing when they break into your office and steal documents and... Yeah. You know, now and it's gone to a very... Threats. Dark. Very dark. Yeah, and now Thanks. she's having rocks thrown through her door. I mean, that's horrifying. Mm -hmm. <sighs> well, we thank you for coming down here, and I hope we haven't upset you or been too hard on you. you, you well, you haven't pray. been hard on me. It's just the whole situation is very unsettling. It yeah, is. It's stressful, isn't it? A little stressful. Yeah. And I care a no, lot. No, it deserves it. I bet Jen. So. No, it's obvious. Yeah, it is. Thank well, you. thank you for coming down. Thank I you. appreciate it, Mom. We didn't mean to You're care about too much of your time. Um, let me know um, what you find out and if I can help. And anything sure. that comes to your mind that you remember, um, just please let us know. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate it. Sure. We parked it.